welcome back guys in this video tutorial we'll be talking about mutagenesis right there's a difference between mutagenesis and mutation the difference is mutation occurs naturally randomly it occurs due to the change of uh, I mean any any kind of chemical agent or physical agent UV radiation or any kind of chemicals that can alter uh, the sequence of our nucleotides will ultimately give, give us any mutation but mutagenesis means genesis means synthesis or production of something and in this case it's generation of a mutation so we generate a specific change a mutation in the DNA of an organism for a particular cause right and that is called mutagenesis and mutagenesis is very important uh, concept because sometimes we need to understand the proper functionality of specific regions of the DNA and we use it mutagenesis pathway to know which uh, what is the function of the desired and mentioned gene or DNA sequence right see in mutagenesis uh, the idea is to create a mutation or generate a mutation in the organism to see the effect because let's say let's say there is a DNA in that DNA there is a gene gene A now we don't know the function of gene A so what we will do we mutate this gene way so that it becomes non-functional sometimes because you know mutation does not mean always uh, non-function or loss of function there are most of the case where due to the mutation loss of function things occur but mutation can be gain of function very rare mutation most of the case loss of function but mutation can also have some other impact some alteration of function also if we want to see whether there is the effect of this, uh, the, the function of this protein and we want to take them completely out, we use different process like gene knockdown, gene knockout, right? But if we want to see what will happen if a mutation takes place to that gene, what kind of different variations will arise, what kind of different properties are added to see gain of function or loss of function or alteration of function, multiple things we can check by mutating that, that gene. So what we want to see, we want to mutate that gene in small region, let's say we want to mutate it in one nucleotide section or in two or three nucleotide section, whatever we can want, we can do that. So how could you do that? If we see, this, is a, this will be a mutation and there are two things we can see. Uh, if I draw it, draw another image here where we draw the normal cell. In this case, this is normal cell normal gene this is a mutation now we want to compare this mutation with the normal scenario for that gene to see the biological response we compare the biological response to see exactly what functionality that gene plays and if that gene got mutated what things will result okay so we can study mutation very closely using this process so do, to, do, to do that, we have a different assay process and that assay involving uh, mainly vectors because cloning plays a vital role in this scenario. So we have, you know, we have plasmid vector, we, if, if we are talking about the eukaryotic uh, chromosomes, eukaryotic genes which are larger, longer, if plasmid does not work properly, we can use cosmid, we can use BAC or YAC, bacterial artificial chromosome or yeast artificial chromosome in this pathway, in this process. What let us say we have a vector whatever vector it is let us say it is a back vector that we have uh, here in our hand. So what we will see here in this case uh, this is uh, the this is the vector double stranded DNA this is the vector. Now what we will produce the first stage is to produce a pi primer the start point right a primer and that primer is based on the sequence that is present in this vector. So we take a small sequence in this vector, let us say A, G, G, C, C, G. Let us say this is the sequence that we have and we want to design a primer. So obviously the complementary here will be T, C, C, G, G, C, the complementary section. The small section, let us say we view this small section. Now what will produce a primer? That primer will be for this stretch only. And that primer, we, we have a mutation in that primer. So we'll take that primer normal. So the primer that we design in this case will be complementary to this sequence. So the complementary to this sequence is G, C, G, 
instead of say C, so obviously it should be G, but instead of G, we place a A in that primer and then rest of the things are similar. So this is our primer. See, this is the primer and the primer contains the mutation and we introduce that mutation in the primer because during the making of primer, we add something else in there. Similarly, in this opposite side also, we create the same thing, we create A, sorry, A, G, G, in this case, instead of G, let us say we place T, because remember, as we are designing primers, these primers, the concept of designing these primers are not the concept of designing PCR primers, they are different, but in this case, uh, we design the mutation, we add the mutation in the same region. So, this is the uh, dimer, this is the base pair GC where we want to put a mutation, right. So, once we put A instead of C here, so definitely the complementary of it will be T. So, you have to put a T here and then rest of the thing C and G. So, these are the two different primers that we design, they are mutated in one base pair that is instead of GC we have a TA. Now, once we have that primer in our hand, then we use that primer to complete the process of the complete the process of trans I um, mean DNA replication because we elongate this primer, we elongate this primer to the forward direction, I mean 5 prime to 3 prime direction here, and similarly to that primer. So after doing this, what we will get? we will get a sequence like this T C C A in the middle and G C and then so we have something like this which will be separated from this now normally this green this blue thing is the organism this blue thing is the vector that we take now normal that this is the primer and we extend that primer using the uh, replication synthesis machinery and then we get this. Now this is the entire replica of that vector or of the chromosome whatever we say, but this is containing a mutation and here after this whole synthesis is done there will be a nick, there would not be a proper joining there will be a nick present. So, we need to join that nick. Remember, the nick will be present for from two different locations. Let us say the nick formed here. This is a nick and this is another nick. So, we have nicks generated and we need to seal those nick, right? How do you seal that nick? Then we take that, take this mutated, mutated replica of the DNA and we insert it to that organism and once you insert it to the organism, the ligase for that organism will seal this nick and rest of the process will work there and this, this transfer is known as transformation that is transferring of material, genetic material uh, directly to the, uh, either if we look for the, in case of bacteria, we do it for bacteria, if you look it for eukaryotic cell, we need to use a different approach, right and obviously we select a different vector there. So, this is the idea, we mutate a specific sequence and using a replica as a vector, vector as a replica and then we produce the uh, replica with the mutation and then insert it into the organism. And once you insert it to the organism, the product which will be made from this gene will be different and, and we will see the effect of that product in that organism's body by the response from that organism. And by looking at the response, we can know the function of those genes that are involved in, okay. So this is how the mutagenesis works and this whole process of mutagenesis that we talk about, this is known as site directed mutagenesis, site directed mutagenesis or SDM because the mutation takes place in a specific site, right, site directed mutagenesis. There are different types of mutagenesis out there, this is a PCR based mutagenesis because we need to produce a primer thing here. So site directed mutagenesis, there are other modes of muta point mutagenesis, there are transposon based mutagenesis. So let us say we want to create a mutation here, 
we use a transposon to insert a genetic segment in between this gene. It will change the course of the gene, it will mutate that DNA. So, transpose is mediated and transposon mediated mutagenesis is also a possibility, right. But whenever we talk about mutagenesis, most of the in vitro mutagenesis assays that we do are site directed mutagenesis because uh, they are easy to do and they are the, all the procedures, all the materials and assay kits are available in the market, right. So that is the process. I hope this video helps you. If you understand the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel as well as share this video to your friends. Thank you.